With me is my apprentice, Obi-Wan Eightlow. Before we begin our conquest of the Republic, we must learn about two-dimensional momentum, an elastic collision to be precise. So, before we jump into our subscript soup, I want to clarify some simple conversions of vectors. If we have a vector A, A can be expressed in Cartesian coordinates as AXI hat plus AYJ hat. It can also be expressed as a polar vector as its magnitude A and then some sort of theta its angle of its polar vector. We can switch between polar and Cartesian. Here, A, if we have the Cartesian coordinates, we can find the polar magnitude by taking the square root of the sum of the squares. And if we have if we have, if we have, if we want its angle of its polar representation, we take the arc tangent of the ratio of AY over AX. And if we have the Cartesian, Cartesian representation, we can switch. Excuse me, if we have the polar representation, we can switch to the Cartesian by A cosine theta and then A sine theta. Now listen, the reason why I'm going over these is because it's really this simple, this experiment with a little bit of error analysis on top of it. So take a deep breath for when we get lost in our subscript soup. Just remember, this is all we're doing. Let's go take a closer look at our inelastic, our elastic collision in here. Here. Okay. Okay. So this is what we're going to be looking at a picture of. Normally, there is a bed of air coming out of this to provide an essentially frictionless surface, and what happens is the <coughs> There's a 100 gram puck and a 50 gram puck. They are launched by these two rubber bands. And then they collide and then they go their separate ways. So, the first thing we need to observe is the scale on the side. Look at the right side. The right side has a scale. Every line here is 20 centimeters all the way to 80 centimeters. We'll need that later on. And now also notice that there are wires on the side. So after the collisions, there might be a recoil picture off the wire. Do not use the recoiled picture. Also, there might be some pictures that are very, very close to the starting point, might not have been completely launched. Don't use those pictures either. Okay, so once again, they'll come out, collide, go their separate ways, and then we have a picture that is taken from that camera up there using that strobe light over there. All right, so this is what we're going to look at. Each image of the puck represents a tenth of a second a tenth of a second. This is before the collision and then after the collision. All right, let's go see what we're going to do with this. That's right. I got the good stuff. I got the good stuff right here. Yeah. All right, so come on. 
on over here. Come on over here. The first thing, the first thing we need is the scale factor. The scale factor. So to find that, we use our ruler and we find the 80 centimeter mark. The 80 centimeter mark. Let's see here. Do we find that? So let's see. One, 10 centimeters, 20, 20, 40, 60, 80. So I get five, uh, five, five, seven, three. I get five point seven three. Okay, so then we take the 80 real life centimeters, divide it by the 5.73, and we get our scale factor 13.8408. That's our scale factor. Terrific. So this is what we're going to be using later on to convert the picture velocities to the real world velocities. Okay, all right, so now we need to adhere the picture onto the paper. So uh, it's convenient to make sure that the center of the table, the horizontal position of the table, is parallel to the lines on the paper. Not necessarily, just convenient. So I tape this on here. I tape this on here. I got the scale on the right side just as I wanted. The 100, pucks, the 100 gram pucks are on this side, the 50 gram pucks are on that side. Terrific. Now I'm ready to poke some holes. And for that, I'll need a probe. You want this? Good. So, come here. Ah, okay. So I'm going to poke holes in the center of the pucks. In the centers. Okay. Okay, and I do mean in the centers. I do mean in the centers. Okay, so when you poked all the holes, 